I uh, going to sing a little song as part of my devotion. Yes, it's country. I was raised that way. You might not like country, but that's okay. Uh, just listen to the words if you would. The years of time have come and gone since I first heard it told how Jesus Christ would come again someday. If back then it seemed so real that I just can't help but feel how much closer His coming is today. Signs of the time are everywhere. There's a brand and strife on every hand and violence fills our land still some people they'll doubt he'll ever come again but the word of God is true he'll redeem his chosen few don't lose hope soon Christ Jesus will descend the signs of the time are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the air. So keep your eyes up on the eastern sky. Lift up your head, your redemption draws. like that. Well, we're just kind of down home here today. The eastern sky bits from a scripture that says when you see all these signs of the time that coming, which are enumerated in scripture, and we're seeing them like everywhere. I mean, tornadoes again yesterday and uh, you know tsunamis and, and uh, uh, hurricanes and earthquakes like you have never seen and, and, uh, and then of course uh, this pandemic, but I mean, there's a lot of things. It's not just this. We are seeing this. Israel becoming a nation in 1948. I mean, that's a huge thing. And Israel will continue to be a nation until the day comes. That was a fact that Scripture says it plain, I believe, from my understanding of Scripture. And I just want to encourage you that we need to live every day. Even before this, we should be living every day with a hope, with our eyes on Christ, not on this world, living for the kingdom of God and that which is eternal, keeping our, our focus and having this hope of the of heaven, having this hope of blessed return of Christ, and you know all of this, and it, w it says that we have the hope we should purify ourselves even as He is pure. So I'm urging you. I believe that God is saying we need to live godly lives. We need to seek after the kingdom of God. I mean, yearn for the kingdom of God, hunger for the things of righteousness, hunger. Jesus said, thirst for these things is so important. And, uh, you know, when it talks about the scripture, everybody's throwing around about if my people will humble themselves and pray. The verse right before it talks about when there's trouble in the land in Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number uh, 13. He's, say, he's saying there, if I shut up the heavens so there's no rain or if I command the locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people. And some versions say a, uh, a pandemic. Some versions of the scripture, this is the NASB. And then it says, if my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that's what we need to do is really seek his face and be humble and turn from our wicked ways, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and look, we'll heal their land. You know, it's us to us, it's up to us rather as believers 
to turn from our own sin, to examine our hearts. I, I was thinking I was living a pretty good life. And when this all went down, I began to examine myself, thinking, you know, what if I get this in a month or now or two months from now? You know, and I'd been exposed. I got thinking, what if I stand before God and give account? Will he be happy with things I watch, whether it's on television or whatever? You kind of get used to You just kind of slide it by. Most of it's good, but that little piece of it is just filthy. I thought to myself, you know, we, we, we place our furniture toward this idol in our, in our house. And I'm not saying that to watch a ball game or, you know, something, you know, just a, something that's clean on television occasionally as, as entertainment is wrong. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is when we just fill our lives full of that and that's our focal point of everything we're doing. and We're not picking up the word. We're not really seeking God. And then we're putting that before God. And so many people today have put put uh, sports before God. And someone posted, you know, how in just a moment, it just seems like a lot of these things are taken away with us. No NBA, no Major League Baseball, no college basketball, March Madness and all these things. Let me tell you something. If our life consists of all these things, we are, have an earthly life. And what hasn't been taken away, what can't be taken away is God's truth that abides forever in his word that is with us forever. And what we need to do is examine ourselves. And we need to, we need to ask God to forgive us of all of our sin and see it and look at it. At the end of Psalm 139, it says this, and it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Make that a prayer. Search me, O God, know my heart. What is really there? Try and it says, and then it says, try me and know my anxious thoughts. So try me and know my thoughts. Try me and know, know my inner man. And then it says, and see if there be any. And the NASB says, hurtful way of me. The King James says, wicked way. And I think they're both appropriate. And lead me in the way of everlasting, the everlasting way, which is to live that. Jesus said, wide is the way that leads to destruction and narrow the way that leads to eternal life. And, and few be that find it. And many go the wide way. So what I'm asking for you to do, church, and anyone else that might view this, please examine your own heart. If you call yourself a Christian, turn from your evil or sin, your selfish ways, your flesh ways, the ways that let everything get in front of God and make God first and seek him and hunger after him and yearn for him and call on him while he can be found. And let's see God heal our nation. Let's really hunger and fast and pray and desire God and see God heal this land and heal us. Let's be a great church by being humble and getting on our knees. God bless you today. I urge you to let me pray for you uh, to, to be a people of prayer and, and of hungering after God. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for our church. And for everyone else who believes in your name and those that don't, may they find you and know that you are a loving God and that all of your laws aren't to restrict us but to bless us and to give us a life that's worth living. And I pray your blessing, your healing touch in Jesus' name, your grace, your forgiveness of your mercy, your blood that covers us, who cover every doorpost over every family and protect everyone, God. And let us be respectful to our neighbors by doing our best, God, to protect ourselves and follow the instructions so that we don't spread this to someone who may die from it. And bless your people, God. And heal them and bless them. Lord, the others, there are people going through other physical things, and I pray for them, Jesus. I pray, God, you would touch them, even people in surgery today that are relatives of some of our people. Be with them. Touch them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Happy Monday. Good to see you today.